Welcome to Electra Online. In the previous video, we showed you the theoretical analysis using this equation right here, simply going around the circuit and adding up all the voltages and then solving that for I, the current, at any point in time to see what an RL circuit is and how it behaves and how an inductor behaves in such a circuit. But what we're going to do now is do an example. We're going to put some real values in there. Let's say we have a battery of 5 volts, a resistor of 10 ohms, and an inductor of 0.4 henrys. We close the switch at t equals zero, what will happen afterwards? And specifically, let's find the current when the time is equal to zero, let's find the current when time is infinity, not really infinity, but after enough time has elapsed so that we've reached steady state value. Let's find the current when t is equal to one time constant, and let's find the current when time is equal to 0.1 seconds. So let's first do part A. At t equals zero, what is the current? Well, we already know that because there's an inductor in the circuit and the moment the switch is closed and the battery tries to put current to the circuit, the inductor opposes that change, holds back the current, so at t equals zero, there is no current at all. So we can say that here, I equals zero at t equals zero, which of course indicated by this curve. What about at the final value? When time has gone by, a sufficient amount of time has gone by so that I has reached its final value, so I then would be equal to uh, I final, and I final is simply defined as the case where the inductor no longer opposes the change because there's no longer a change in the current, it simply becomes a resistor circuit, and so with Ohm's law we can say it's equal to E over R, in this case the voltage would be 5 volts, and the resistance is 10 ohms, and that would be 0 0.5 amps. So, at steady state value, when a sufficient amount of time has passed, the current will have reached a value of 5 or 0.5 amps. Now, another way of looking at that is to realize that after five time constants, the current has reached more than 99% of its final value. So, what is a time constant? Well, by definition, the time constant is equal to the ratio of L divided by R. Remember, the bigger the inductor, the more, the longer it takes for the current to reach its final value because the bigger inductor opposes the change in the current more strongly and therefore it takes longer for the final value to have arrived. And then finally, if the resistor is very large, that means a smaller time constant because the larger resistor means a smaller end current because the final current is simply E divided by R. A bigger resistor simply means a smaller final current, which means we'll get to that final value more quickly because it's a smaller change. So in this case, since L is equal to 0.4 Henry's, we get 0.4 Henry's divided by 10 ohms. That means it's 0.04 seconds, in this case, is the time constant. If we multiply the times 5, 5 times 0.04 is 0.2. That means after 0.2 seconds, we've pretty well reached the final value of the current. Now we have to find the current when t is equal to tau, when t is equal to one time constant, which in this case would be 0 0.04 seconds. So we're going to take our equation that we derived in the last video. We can say that I, when time is equal to one time constant, that would be equal to the final current times one minus e to the minus t over tau. Now since I said that t was going to be equal to tau, this becomes tau divided by tau. So what I've done is I've replaced the time in my equation by what time is equal to, which is equal to one time constant. So tau divided by tau is minus one. So we get I, when t is equal to tau, is equal to the final current, which we know is 0 0.5 amps, 0 0.5 amps, times one minus e to the minus one. All right, for that we need, an equa we need a calculator. So we have one, make that negative, take that as an exponent, and subtract that uh, from one. And so we have that times 0.5, and that 0 0.316 ohms. So this would be 0 0.316 amps, not ohms, but amps. So that would be the current after one time constant, notice, after one time constant, after 0.04 seconds, the, final, the current has already reached more than 50% of its final value. All right, finally, we want to find the current when time is equal to 0.1 seconds. So I, when T is equal to 0.1 seconds, is equal to 0.5 amps times one minus E to the minus T. Now, instead of 
pound, we're going to write the actual time that we were given, 0.1 seconds, divided by tau, and tau we know is 0.04 seconds. But in other words, this then becomes I, when time is equal to 0.1 seconds, is equal to 0.5 amps times 1 minus e to the minus, that would be 2.5 power, because 0.1 divided by 0.04 is 2.5. And so now again, we take a calculator, go 2.5, make that negative, but that becomes the exponent. Subtract that from 1, and we multiply that times 0.5, and we get 0.459. So that would be equal to 0 0.459 amps. And that's how we do that. So in case of any value between time equals 0 and time equals 5 time constants or greater, at that point is almost infinity for the circuit, then we can say we simply plug the time in for, for t. So in this case, we plug in the time for t. If it's 1 tau, just put in 1 tau, that becomes e to the minus 1. If it's a specific value for time, like 0.1 seconds, plug it in, divide it by the value that we get for tau, work out the fraction, that becomes the exponent or the negative exponent, and then you just work it out with your calculator. And that's how we find the time in the circuit at any point between time equals 0 and time equals infinity.